Abba Namaste guys, Christian Long, Life Enhancement Consultant, giving you a big and beautiful shout out on this, almost forgot what day it was, on this Friday afternoon here in Denver, Colorado. Actually, it's more like evening. It's about 7 o'clock. Jenny, Abba Namaste. And I wanted to jump on real quick. This isn't going to be a live stream, or a live, it is a live stream. This isn't going to be a long stream unless you want it to be by asking questions and what have you relative to the topics on energy healing, meditation, and practical spirituality. Um, so this coming Sunday, we're going to be doing a group Twin Hearts meditation and a healing using silence and stillness. It's actually a fascinating topic. I could cover it more. But basically, this coming Sunday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Mountain Time, Denver, Colorado time, um, and people can join from all over the world, and I'll... As I post this video, I'll put the link so you guys can see it, but it's also below this video if you're watching it on Facebook of the event that we're going to be doing. But it's going to be from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Mountain Time. We're going to be doing 30 minutes of a miniature lecture on how you can use stillness for healing. We're going to do the Twin Hearts Meditation in a group, and then we're going to do some healing connected to stillness and silence. Um, so we'll get it all done within an hour, and you'll be supercharged up because... Without this thing, nothing happens. And what's that thing that we're referring to? Energy. 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 I remember a successful businessman used to say, nothing happens until someone sells something. right? Until there's an exchange of value. Money for the product, money for the service, what have you. So nothing happens in life without energy. And there are many different kinds of energies that have different purposes and different functions, but at the end of the day, we need energy to move things forward. And the reason we can't move, Stephen Ottman, I'm say, the reason we can't move things forward in our lives, whether it's health, relationships, spiritual growth and development, finances, whatever it is, is because of lack of energy and or, and or congested energy that's blocking the free flow of new fresh energy or fresh prana. So each and every area of our lives that are not moving forward, we either have a congested amount of energy or we are lacking in energy. So if we increase your energy level by two times, five times, 10 times or more, that's an accelerant for the good and the not so good within your system. So that's why on the spiritual path, whether it's a pranic healing, meditation or hatha yoga meditation, whether it's from another religion or spiritual school, purification is super, super important because as you purify and introduce new fresh energy into your system, the results are going to be positive. It would be similar to having a plot of land that has a bunch of weeds in that soil and then you dump a lot of fertilizer on those weeds. What's going to happen to the weeds? You're going to have more or less weeds. You're going to have more weeds. Same thing with spiritual energy. As you introduce more spiritual energy into a person's life, it's going to accelerate whatever is in that person's energy body, chakras, and their karma, right? So if you have a clean plot of land, you remove all the weeds, and you put in seeds of certain tomatoes, fruits, vegetables, whatever, and then you introduce fertilizer, it will grow all of those seeds faster and you will reap your harvest faster. Same thing in the spiritual world. So as you clean out all the weeds, the vices, the weaknesses, the limitations within ourselves, you introduce spiritual energy by and also by planting good seeds of good thoughts, good words, good actions, and you energize those things in your life, your life dramatically improves. Actually, I'm going to mistake. Here's the thing, though. Most of us have no idea how many weeds we have within our system, not from just this lifetime, but previous lifetimes. And so that's why purification is important. Purification is important. Purification is important. It was actually very interesting. I was in an Uber ride coming back tonight to my place after watching a movie with a friend. And this woman, within a one-month period, was having to leave her apartment because the neighbors next to her were smoking crack 
or no, smoking meth out of their apartment and it was going through the vents into her apartment. Then she reported this to the cops. The next day, her vehicle stopped working because they poured sugar in the gas tank. So she lost her car. Then when she went to apply for different um, apartment complexes, she was denied. One place kept her deposit and then eventually the other place called her back and said, we'll take you. And then um, something about losing her job, all within about a month's period. But within the past week, she's getting a new vehicle today. She's moving into her new, brand new apartment in a nice part of town this week. Um, job is being upgraded and then something po else positive happened. So it was funny how she said, wow, I must be working through a lot of negative karma right now. I didn't even bring that up. The Uber driver as well as the passenger was asking me, well, what do you do for work? I said, I'm a professional energy healer and meditation teacher. And then that opened up the portal for us to have this higher level conversation. So she was like, oh, I'm working through some of my negative karma. And then I'm thinking of one of the quotes by Grandmaster Cho Koksui, the modern founder of Pranic Healing and Arhatic Yoga. And he says, after the storm, there'll be greater growth and success. So after the difficult things, after we purify and purge out our negative karma, which is seeds that we planted in previous incarnations or in this incarnation, and we work through that karma, then there'll be greater growth, greater success, greater opportunities. And so she was already practicing a high level of gratitude of like, you know what? You're right. I'm grateful that I'm going to be living in a nicer place. I'm grateful that I'm going to be having a nicer vehicle. I'm grateful that I no longer have to be next to my neighbors who are meth heads. So she was like getting it and her heart was expanding. And she goes, I'm also learning about patience because Jenny, I'm an Amaste. She's like, my patience has been at an all time thin razor margin over the past month. So all of these things, she's getting an opportunity to work through. So here's an interesting observation. Uh, and I was sharing this with somebody else and they go, wow, that's a really good point. Again, these are not my teachings. These are the teachings of my teacher, Grandmaster Cho Koksui. And he was saying that when you're working through karma, how do we know you've learned the lesson if you're not tested with that lesson? Meaning, you recognize that within yourself, you're not a very patient person. You're impatient a lot. You're just impatient with friends, family members. You're impatient with traffic. You're impatient with you know, your fitness routine. You're just impatient all around. And then you start reading some books on patience. You start reading some books on forgiveness. You start attending some seminars, some workshops, going to meditation groups, getting healing, getting coaching, and, and you start having a greater understanding and appreciation for patience which comes from the heart. And you're like, oh, okay. So you're, you, you think and feel that you have a better grasp on what patience is. But how do you know if you have a better grasp on patience unless you're tested, right? So what will happen is you think you've mastered patience and so guess what? The world will organize itself for you to learn a lesson and you'll have not a little bit of traffic that you're used to, but you're gonna have traffic that is more congested and more bumper to bumper than you've ever experienced up to that point in your life. For what purpose? To see if you have learned the lesson of patience. And then guess what? If you pass that lesson, you're now upgraded to the next level of patience. So you're able to withstand and handle more things that would make you impatient. So people have this assumption that by working on something like patience, like gratitude, like forgiveness, like happiness, enthusiasm, all these things, that they're not going to be challenged and tested. But that's the only way we know if we're improving is if we are challenged, we, come, we, we succeed in that challenge and then we move forward. So it's, it's interesting when we do our Hatha Yoga retreats within Pranic Healing and our Hatha Yoga, there's a, there's a pretty common theme that takes place for each and every person. It's actually one of the instructions that is at the end of the retreat or end of the weekend that we 
that the instructors, the masters that are leading the event say, you will be tested within the next week to month about something. It could be anger. It could be impatience. It could be... Mm, self-delusion, self-conceitedness, negative pride. It could be any number of things. Whatever you're specifically working on, that's what's going to come up into your awareness. And I just finished a 21-day spiritual vacation with the Masters in the Catskill, the Catskills of New York. And I've been back for about two weeks now, and I'm starting to have some realizations on what my tests are. And I think a couple of them I've passed and a couple of them I have not passed. So what does that mean? More purification, more purification, more purification. Patty Atman, I'm a state. So having a test and failing doesn't mean you're a bad person. It simply means you haven't learned the lesson to take that test and pass it. So guess what? If you don't learn the lesson, the test will come again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, <laughs> and again, until you eventually learn the lesson. It's kind of like if you were to be in high school, you're a freshman in high school, and you have certain placement exams in your class to take you to this class, that class, and then this test brings you to this grade, this grade brings you to college, et cetera, et cetera. But if you're failing the test as a freshman, that's saying you're not ready to start taking college courses. You have not passed the test as a freshman to be qualified to take, uh, to be a freshman in college. You can't pass the freshman high school, you can't take the freshman college, right? Does that make sense? So it's a really clear, simple way of looking at life that even if you fail the test it doesn't mean you're a bad person it just means you have you will get another opportunity to work through that lesson to go to the next level because ultimately isn't that where we want to be with our lives we want to constantly be improving growing transforming and it never ends i told one of my clients and a good friend of mine she didn't like hearing this but i think it finally sunk in after reminding her of this lesson for the past two years, two plus years, is that personal growth never ends. Spiritual growth never ends. Overcoming challenges and obstacles and mistakes never ends, never. So just when you think you've mastered loving kindness and non-injury, you'll be presented with a test at another level. Just when you think you've mastered generosity and non-stealing, you'll be presented with another test at a higher level. Just when you think you've mastered honesty and non-lying, you're gonna be challenged at the next level. Just when you think you've mastered constancy of aim and effort and non-laziness, you're gonna be challenged to go to the next level. Just when you think you've mastered moderation and non-excessiveness, you're challenged to go to the next level. And that's how it works. That's how it works. So compassion is infinite. Love is infinite. Patience is infinite. All of these virtues and positive qualities, there is no limit to how you can expand those virtues within your incarnation as well as from the soul level. So it's really fascinating. And I think that's why humility is so very, very important for people to practice on a consistent and persistent basis. Because by practicing humility, you have self-awareness, you have self-honesty, you recognize where your strengths are, you, rec you recognize where your weaknesses are. So you take on what you can take on to move your life forward versus like thinking you don't have to work on something so you avoid it, you sweep it under the rug, and then the lesson just becomes more intense later on down the path. Because if you avoid it, you're avoiding the thing that you need to work on in order to move your entire life forward. Does that make sense? It's kind of like somebody who 
um, has a little extra body fat, you know, let's say their ideal body weight is 150 pounds and they have 170 pounds. So they go, well, I'm not really that heavy. They start making excuses, rationalizations. I'm big boned, I'm this, I'm that. So then they go from 170 to 180 to 190 to 200 and they're still using the same excuses, rationalizations. Now they're at 210, 220, 240, 250, 275 after a 10, 15 year period and they're very, very unhealthy and out of shape. Right, So the lesson was not learned at 160 or 170. The lesson is now being learned at 275 where it's going to require more willpower, more focus, more concentration in order to make it happen. So if you can practice humility as early as possible in your spiritual development, being honest with yourself, what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, you're able to catch things faster not suffer as much and move your life forward faster. Now granted, just like we were talking about, I'm sharing these things with you not because I've mastered each and everything that I'm sharing with you uh, because I'm still in the process of growing, evolving, making mistakes, becoming a better person and I'm a better person now than I was 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago but I still realize, wow, I have a very long way to go here, long way to go here, long way to go here. Chat now, I'm gonna stay. Does that make sense? So I hope this adds value to you guys. I hope it helps you have a greater realization of who you are and what you are to recognize that you need energy to move things forward. Energy makes things happen. No energy, nothing happens. No blessings, nothing happens. You need those things to move your life forward. Whether you realize it or not, whether you're aware of it or not, whether you believe in it or not. It's like saying, well, I don't believe in karma. It would be similar to saying, I don't believe in gravity. Okay, well, you jump off a bridge and see if you don't fall to the ground. It doesn't matter what you believe or not. It's irrelevant. Cause and effect is always in effect. Right? Well, I don't believe in karma. I don't believe that if I do something to this person that that bad thing that I did is going to come back to me many, many times. I don't believe in it. Okay, well, then that's fine. Start doing a bunch of evil things to people and see what you notice. Then... Do a bunch of nice things to people and see what you notice. It's a self-evident truth. You don't have to look very far. You just look at the self and go, when I smile at people, people smile back at me. When I frown at people, people frown back at me. Very, very easy. Very easy way to validate that. So I hope that helps. I hope you guys are having a phenomenal, beautiful, amazing off the chain weekend. This is the start of the weekend for most people on Friday night. Uh, I'm just going to chill out here, read some books, digest some um, some lessons that I'm processing to become a better person. Uh, for those of you who are in need of coaching and healing to move your life forward, I highly recommend going to christianrlong.com, christianrlong.com. It's my website. Click on schedule a consultation or schedule a healing, and I look forward to serving you. I look forward to helping you. I look forward to healing you and transforming your life. So... That is all. Lots of light, love, and power from God and my teacher, Grandmaster Cho Koksui, into your lives. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. This is Christian Long, Life Enhancement Consultant, wishing you a beautiful day, a beautiful week, and a beautiful life. Atma, namaste. Uh, you're welcome, Atal. It's always wonderful to have you on and adding value. Love you guys. Bye-bye.